My girlfriend Liza and and her male friend Jay grew up in the same neighborhood, just a few houses down from each other. They were best friends in elementary school and then drifted apart a bit in middle school. During high school, Jay's parents went through a really nasty divorce. I'm not really clear on all the details but I know that Jay's dad moved out and Jay and his mom were really struggling financially. Liz's parents are about as kind generous and warm people you'll ever meet and they took care of Jay. He would often have dinner with them, do family stuff with them, crash at Liz's place. Over this time, Liz and Jay became best friends again and stayed that way until college. Jay ended up getting a major scholarship to a really good school out west and left for school while Liz stayed close to home. Over the years, they followed each other on socials but had little other contact. I met Liz a little over three years ago as part of a social league for volleyball in our city. By luck of the draw, we were placed on the same team. We met each other at the welcome event and really hit it off. She is kind, gracious, smart, witty, beautiful, fun and is just the right amount competitive. She's the kind of girl that guys meet and fall in love with and I guess I'm one of those guys but somehow, she also liked me. A year after meeting, we were moving in together and talking about the future. By no means is our relationship a fairy tale romance but we have weathered our fair share of storms and have what I believe to be a healthy relationship with a good sex life, strong communication and shared goals and values. We've talked marriage, kids, all of it. Here's where Jay comes back into the story. A few years back, Jay started a tech company with a friend. Their company grew rapidly and were bought out by a major player in the tech world. Jay moved back to our city this year. On Labor Day, we went to a party at a friend of Liz's from high school. Jay was also there. It was the first time that Liz had seen him in probably four slash five years so the two spent a lot of the party catching up. I'm not originally from the area so many of Liz's friends have become my friends so I was hanging out and let them catch up. On the way home from the party, Liz said that Jay had invited us over to his new house and that we needed to find a date. A few weeks later, we head over to Jay's house. From the moment he opened the door to greet us, Jay was weird to me. I think he didn't realize that I was coming too. Maybe that Liz was coming by herself? Almost the whole day, Jay spoke only to Liz. When Liz would try to include me in the conversation or talk about me, Jay seemed to change the subject to reminisce about old stories. It was very strange and was just kind of exhausting. Eventually, I went inside to the kitchen to get a drink and chatted with Jay's chef, he has a private chef to make his food. The chef was cool and confirmed that he had been told it was Jay plus one guest for dinner. Liza and I tried to chalk that whole day up to a misunderstanding, that maybe he just wanted to continue catching up, but there have been plenty of awkward things since then. For example, when at Jay's, Liz saw a La Creuset Dutch oven and said something about always wanting one but not being able to justify the cost. Well what shows up on our doorstep a few days later? The same exact La Creuset. She one time mentioned that she really likes a very expensive classic lounge chair but it's almost $4,000. It showed up at our place the next week. She said something the next day when we saw Jay but he gave this weird smile and said multiple times that he didn't know what she was talking about. Jay is building a new company that creates tech for the hospitality industry. For this reason, he has connections with restaurants and breweries all over the city. In the fall, he invited Liz to a special dinner at a chef's table that is inside of the kitchen at one of the nicest restaurants in the city. Jay knows the chef so they would get the royal treatment. When Liz asked if I could come as well, he told her that the table only seats two. Liz and I talked it out for a while and in the end decided that she would go without me and she reported back that it felt like two friends having dinner together. I was talking about the whole thing with a coworker who told me she had also done the chef's table and the table seats four. At the beginning of December, Jay invited her to a special event at a local museum. One of the major museums in our city hosts a special Christmas party that you have to be invited to and is really exclusive. Think knockoff version of the Met Gala without the celebrities and holiday themed. Jay got two tickets and invited Liz. 
She's wanted to go for ages and never thought it was possible so again we talked it out and decided she would take him up on the offer. Again, she says he acted like a friend but in hindsight, it feels weird that he keeps inviting her to stuff like this. As I'm writing this out, I already feel like people are getting ready to tell me that she's cheating on me or that I'm a pushover for letting Liz go to one on one things with Jay. But one, we don't have the kind of relationship where I wouldn't let her do something she wanted and two, she is super honest with me. She's also a terrible liar, she has the easiest tells in the world. She's too moral and good-natured to keep a bad secret. That's why I believe her when she's assured me time and time again that Jay is very much in the friend zone. She is not interested. She believes that he is lonely and wants to return to being best friends. My worry is that Liz naturally sees the best in people. For example, if someone cuts her off in traffic, her natural response is that they must be in some kind of emergency situation. She genuinely trusts people, cares for people and wants the best for them. I, on the other hand, am a natural skeptic. I tend to think that people are just out for themselves. I find her optimism really beautiful but struggle to see the world in the same way. The long and short of it is that we both feel uncomfortable with the gifts and fancy dinners that he keeps getting her but when she brought it up to him, he says he is paying her back for taking him in in high school. He asked her to keep letting him do things for her because he feels like he needs to return the many favors her family did for him. Finally, this week, our friends got together for an annual Christmas party. It's been a tradition at that party to do a white elephant gift exchange. It's always weird stuff or funny items. Jay showed up with a second gift that he was cagey about all night. Someone thought it was part of the gift exchange and he kind of freaked out a bit. Near the end of the night, he pulled Liz aside and gave her this second gift. Inside was a designer handbag and a super expensive pair of designer heels. She felt very uncomfortable accepting them and in the awkwardness of the situation just said thanks then we left soon after. Now, two days later, Liz has decided she wants to return the gifts to Jay and tell him they are too much, I think she said that they were almost $2,000 combined. I think we need to tell Jay to back off as well but Liz is saying that I'm being overly harsh. What I'm asking is. Am I being too harsh in telling a guy to back off who is trying to repay former kindness? If I'm not out of line telling him to back off, how can we ask him to stop with the gifts without destroying the friendship? TLDR. An old friend of my girlfriend's is back in town showering her with gifts to repay her former kindness. These gifts make us both uncomfortable. Do we and, if so, how do we tell him to back off? Liz told me that she had decided to give back Jay's expensive Christmas gifts. She waited until he posted on Instagram about being out at an event at a local bar for a night, then drove over to his house with a friend, and they left the gifts by the front door with a note that said, paraphrased, Jay, thank you so much for thinking of me this Christmas. While all the gifts you've been giving me are generous, I feel bad taking them. It was my parents who took you in back when we were in school, I was just excited to live with my friend, they are the ones who took care of you. If you feel the need to give back, my parents have always supported local charity. I'm sure they would be happy to know you gave the amount of these gifts in their honor. She hoped this would end things and he'd get the picture. I was doubtful. Around 2 a.m. that night, presumably when he got home and saw the returned gifts, he started bombarding her with text messages. They were all some combination of. 1. He was such a good friend and she was lucky to have him. He was going to give her the gifts back because it was false modesty that she was showing in not accepting them. She should always expect gifts from him and that he would always protect her and be her hero. It was really weird and creepy. We were already asleep and the messages came in so quickly and repeatedly that it woke us up. We agreed to try to go back to sleep and deal with it all in the morning. Luckily, we were leaving early the next morning to see my family for the holidays. On the way there, we worked together to craft a final message to Jay. 
Liz told him in the text that it seems like he wants a deeper relationship than she does, that she was happy in her relationship with me, and that she was blocking him to give him time to sort out his feelings for her. 30 minutes after that, we got a notification from our doorbell. I'll give you a guess who it was. He came back a few hours later to bring the gifts back. Then came back again the next morning and then again that evening. Friends started saying that Jay had reached out to ask where Liz was, saying that he was afraid for her safety. Luckily, we didn't tell that many people about our trip, and those who knew also knew about Liz blocking Jay and all stonewalled him. Still saying it was a stressful situation is a major understatement. Honestly, the stress of it ruined our New Year's. While in my hometown, we visited my cousin whose husband is a lawyer. We asked about protective orders. He told us that unfortunately, for our state, there have to be threats of harm or proof that he was stalking Liz. He told us that Jay's actions to that point were not extreme enough, but he encouraged us to save our video doorbell feed and to keep a record of every interaction in case things escalated. My parents let us stay in my hometown an extra few days before going home but eventually we had to head back for a work event that Liz had to go to. We were pretty nervous the first few days at home and I installed two extra cameras outside our home with a wider view range than the doorbell could offer. Luckily, we didn't hear anything from Jay. After not hearing anything from or about him for about two weeks, we couldn't tell if we had gotten lucky or if something else was going on. While our closest friends knew what was going on and had all blocked Jay when Liz had, we had some friends of friends that Liz knew were still close to him. We had a close friend reach out to one of Jay's friends. This guy said that no one had heard or seen from Jay in about three weeks, he had missed two parties he said he would be at and hadn't posted on socials for a while, Jay was the kind of guy who would post on Insta three to four times a week. I should have left the whole thing go there, but my curiosity got the better of me. I reached out to a friend in the middle of February who works in the restaurant industry. I knew that they had been in conversations with Jay's new company about becoming a client. This friend told me that they hadn't heard from Jay in over a month but that there was a rumor going around that Jay's business partner and I guess the whole new business was tied to some sketchy stuff and a lot of the restaurants he knew of had gotten cold feet. No one had heard from Jay in a while and this friend had not seen him at a recent industry event. This caused one of our friends and me to go into detective mode. Back when Jay had first moved back to the area, a bunch of us were invited over to a party at his house which was a huge mansion in a super wealthy area. Liz and I were having a hard time remembering but feel like he was telling people he had just bought it. Last week, the friend who I've been doing Detective Y stuff with found that house on a website full of luxury homes for long-term rental. We checked on Zillow and the house was last sold almost a decade ago so we don't think that he bought it and rented it out. We looked up a news report for when his company sold and we don't see his name anywhere in the article. That being said, the only person it named was the CFO so maybe he was an owner? We can't figure it out. So that's it. We don't have any answers for what happened to Jay. We can't figure out if he was just a sketchy guy whose new company had closed or if he was some kind of scam artist. Part of me thinks that he got a payday and is probably living in Costa Rica or something but I wouldn't be surprised if he had been telling stories the entire time. Maybe he only owned a few shares in the company so he had a bit of cash but conflated his role in his bank account? I don't think we will ever have answers. On the plus side, it seems like he's out of our lives, and while we are continuing to keep an eye out, we are hoping we don't ever have to see him again.